Hello out there, everyone, and welcome back to our continuing nerd adventure through the comic book landscape. Um, sorry for the slight cold sound. I am a little under the weather, but uh, you know what? Content must go on. So uh, today, we are going to be doing our first Patreon-suggested discussion topic. And this topic comes from Kurt, um, one of my longtime comic book friends and uh, one of the patrons on my Patreon. Um, if you would like to check out uh, the site, there'll be links all around. And if you are um, part of the $5 reward tier or higher, you can suggest um, discussions and different content for the channel, just like Kurt has. Um, and Kurt wants to know, what do I think the state of the comic book industry will be going forward 5, 10, 15 years? So a big question. Thank you, Kurt, for your support and your question. And by the way, um, longtime viewers of the channel will probably uh, remember Kurt as being the gentleman who I went to Baltimore Comic Con with uh, a year ago and who was working on Crown the Barbarian and stuff like that. So I will um, link his website. I believe it's just KurtBrugelDraws.com. Um, he has a bunch of really cool stuff, especially if you're into sword and sorcery and all that good stuff he's putting out now. Um, monthly comic books um, coming forward with like small little backup pages. It looks awesome. Um, it's really, really cool. So check his stuff out. But on to the question that Kurt has posed to us. <clears throat> you know, uh, let me preface it by saying that I am probably not the biggest expert on this subject owing simply to the fact that I haven't really been reading seriously or been into the comic book world, um, you know, much longer than, I guess, four, four years or so, something like that. So I'm sure there are people out here who watch the channel, who uh, watch the podcast or stuff, who have been reading, collecting, and interfacing with the comic book uh, community and, and industry for, I mean, literally five times as long as that, if not more. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who have been collecting their whole lives. So um, take this all with a grain of salt. This is just very much my own opinions, my thoughts um, from somebody who is pretty immersed in the comic book landscape and who uh, has, you know, spoken with artists at conventions and fans and stuff and other people who talk critically about comic books. This is sort of my feelings on on some of where the industry might be headed or some of the big, I guess, problems or th things that need to be solved. Um, so I'm just going to throw out a couple big ideas that I have, and uh, I'm not by any means presenting a complete answer to any of these ideas. Believe me, I, I don't know it. Um, but I would love to hear some of your opinions on these, um, on these kind of like pillars that I'm going to present today and to uh, see what you guys think about some of the different things that I believe to be important for the future of the comic book industry. So I think what I'm going to do when discussing this is go by how Kurt phrased the question, which is to say things that I think will affect the comic book industry the soonest versus uh, things that I think will, you know, take a longer time. So the five, 10, 15, whatever years. Um, the thing that I think is the most um, pressing right now on the industry is the relaunch crossover structure of the big two companies dc and marvel and how sustainable it is um you know we're in a spot right now where i think people consider it to be like a second golden age of comics um where there's tons of new readers coming in courtesy of uh superhero films and and courtesy of the quality um, and availability of the content of comic books. It's, it's fantastic. You know, after, um, the kind of mid to late nineties happened and, um, the market crashed out from under, um, comic books and everybody, you know, I think sort of looked at what was being produced in that period of time. And, you know, as of 2000 and onwards, you had the rise of, uh, writers in comic books being the kind of superstars as opposed to in the 90s it was guys like Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld and Eric Larson like you know they were like the superstars they had you know Levi's jeans commercials there's literally Levi's jeans commercials I think I've mentioned it before with um Todd McFarlane and you know all these guys who went off to found image comics they were like the superstar guys and then I think as of the early 2000s it kind of switched to people thinking of guys like Brian K. Vaughn, uh, Bendis, 
um, Ed Brubaker, um, Scott Snyder. Um, I'm sure there's tons that I'm forgetting. But, like, those to me now are what people think of when they think of, like, comic book superstars are sort of the writers. So it's much more of a, a writer-based medium in my mind right now. And with that comes, I think, an increased quality of the stories around these books. So as I was saying, there's a lot of readers in comic books at the moment. But I think we're coming to this weird spot of companies wanting to figure out how to do maximum profit engagement in a minimum amount of time without looking out for the long term of the company. Um, and I think I mentioned I did an entire video on DC Rebirth, and I want to amend some of the things that I said in that video. Um, in that video, it was called like DC Rebirth Thoughts, and I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I was very harsh um, ab about Rebirth, um, and a lot of the things that I said were, were was that it was mostly a play towards stagnation and legacy stuff and and not actually sort of an original content idea it's just taking the same things that we've seen before and kind of like muddling them up and then re-giving it to you re-gifting it to you basically <clears throat> and i still think that that is the case for some of the things I, I still you know i've yet to see how watchmen is going to be integrated into the universe in a way that doesn't um frustrate me <laughs> But um, I would also like to say that I think what I very much underestimated about that relaunch is the clarity of focus that DC as a company has right now. I didn't quite give them the benefit of the doubt that they would be able to you know, put together and usher the line of comics or that they have towards a specific set idea have everybody on the same page and kind of be moving and working in this one direction. I think I underestimated that because in contrast to that, Marvel right now is a fucking shit show. I have no idea what's going on with them. They have numbering things all over the place. Um, they relaunch stuff every, you know, like we're in all new, all different Marvel, which was a relaunch from Marvel now, but now Marvel now is coming back. It's, it's terrible, honestly. Like, I, I like, really and truly can't recommend somebody at this moment to jump on to Marvel because of where everything is and whether, you know, there's there were series that went, like, I think the Hawkeye series, for example, it went something like five or ten issues in, all, in Marvel now, and then it renumbered for all new, all different, but now I don't know if it's going to be renumbered again for the new Marvel now. It's... And, like, Squirrel Girl did that, too. There were, like, five of one, and then it reset at number one, and then reset again. I think it's a really awful model that they're doing, and I think it has no coherence to it. You know, that's the thing I underestimated from DC was, was that Rebirth actually has a, a sort of a direction and a coherence, and it feels like people are talking to each other. So even if maybe the overall, um, you know direction that they're going isn't something that I would love to see a company mine at least there is a coherence there <laughs> at least it makes sense um and you know Marvel is just in this crazy shit show place right now and not only that but I think they're kind of falling into the crossover trap where since um Marvel relaunched their stuff with all new all different we've had already an Avengers standoff crossover there was a uh, there was an x-men apocalypse war crossover and now there's like a death of x crossover coming on and i think with all of these nobody's really been that interested in them or at least that i've you know taken the temperature of online and it's just various artists and various writers and it's all all over the place you know the last great event i think that somebody pulled off was um secret wars that hickman and Assad ribic did and you know why that was great it was because it was the culmination of of Hickman's work as a writer through years and years and years of setting stuff up, of putting the universe in this place that he can then execute this amazing story on. And you know what doing a crossover five issues into All New, All Different does? Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It's nobody's going to remember it, ever. Nobody's going to remember Avengers Standoff. It's meaningless. Um, you know, it sells a lot of copies and it gets people buying who maybe only buy Avengers to buy five other books to read and, and somebody who only buys Iron Man to get five other books to read that month. It sells a lot of copies in the, in the short term, but it has no, uh, you know, weight and, and long-term length to it. Um, and so I find that really frustrating. I really think that, that the big two need to figure out, 
you know, Marvel and DC, how to put forth a united front of some sort through their company, or at least to be able to explain their company to somebody. You know, DC at least ex can explain their company as, you know, we have these pillars of Bat books, we have these pillars of Superman books, we have these pillars of Justice League books, and we have these other, you know, books if you'd like to read those. I mentioned that when Rebirth launched. They're, those are the, sort of the pillars that they have. They're rolling with it. I can explain it in one sentence to somebody, and I can tell them what to pick up. I can't explain Marvel right now f at all. I have no idea what's going on. You know, it, it's everywhere. It's all over the fucking place. And uh, it's really disappointing. Because I think Image, the rise of Image Comics as a quality, independent production, you know, um, publisher... I think that puts forth the the idea that people are willing to read disparate and interesting stories all over the place. You know, Image doesn't have an Image verse. Um, I mean, there's some kind of like crossover between like Invincible and uh, I think some of the Skybound books. But like for for you know by and large, whatever is launching in the Image um, line is not connected to something else. And people gravitate towards a lot of those books. You know, Image took, has grabbed a huge um, portion of the sales um, percentages in the last couple of years. I believe for a point they had eclipsed, um, I don't know if they'd ever eclipsed DC, but they certainly are considered now to be like the big three sellers, um, Marvel, DC, and Image. I don't know if they ever eclipsed DC. They might have, I think they might have at some point in the last like two or three years, but I might be wrong about that. Um, but, you know, percentage-wise, market-wise, they definitely eclipsed Dark Horse, who, um, which used to be one of the biggest um, publishers. But my point is that image stuff is disconnected and is different stories, but they don't try to sell crossovers to people or they don't try to, sh you know, shim it all together every six months to sell more books. They just let people do what they do and they, you know, write interesting single point stories you just follow that book you know you follow saga from 1 to 38 and you get a great story out of it and you can't do that with a lot of marvel books right now you can't follow something for that long because you either get crossovers where you're like meant to be buying multiple things or you get relaunches where they renumber stuff bring in new creative teams i just feel like there's a real um short-sighted uh, you know lack of foresight going on with some of the big creative pushes in the industry and that relaunching all the time and you know new variant covers for every relaunch and limited whatever is for every relaunch i i just don't think that that has long-term healthy consequences for the industry so in my mind in the next like five years that's what really needs to get figured out from uh from marvel especially at the moment because somehow dc managed to come together in rebirth in a way that i underestimated them and um i think that that is like a really big for me is just kind of like making your line of comics able to be explained and stood for on its own and not feeling like you're relaunching, retooling, and changing everything every six months because I don't think you're going to maintain readers that way. My next point about the state of the industry is sort of more in, in the 10-year range. And this is one that I, am, I have less of a solid opinion on, but I, I'm just interested in what other people think. And that is the separation of comic books from comic cons uh, or i guess you could call it like the creation of more niche um cons and and uh you know expos and stuff like that um i think it's just an interesting thing you know like i know i talk every time i haven't been to that many conventions but i've been to um, a couple around, uh, up and down the east coast and um when i talk to artists there i know there's always a lot of frustration at the lack of people coming to see and promote independent comic creation stuff, you know, people in Artist Alley, and with the overwhelming amount of people coming in cosplay stuff to buy, you know, Funko Pops and, um, and T-shirts and, you know, lightsaber toys and stuff, um... And I don't think that that's bad. I don't think it's it's a bad thing to be a fan of anything. But I just, I wonder about the, you know, long-term viability of comics staying within comic cons. And if there's going to be kind of like a break-off into more um, smaller kind of conventions where people who really are interested in comic books can come and do stuff, you know, related to that, whether it be 
you know, promoting uh, Artist Alley kind of size people, you know, who are just launching books or whether it be doing signatures and sketches and stuff like that, or whether it be doing, you know, panels that are more focused on the comic book industry itself. Um, I just feel like when you go to some of the conventions, there's, uh, there's, there's feels to me like an, a, a very real tension between, um, you know, people who are there for comic books and who are there to meet comic book creators and who are there to get sketches and stuff and people who are there to, um, you know, have a, a general kind of geek culture experience and buy, you know, like the one uh, in my Baltimore con previous one that I showed you, you know, all the vendors were selling, you know, there were people selling old video games. There are people selling t-shirts. There are people selling comic books. Of course, there are people selling anime. There's people selling like loot crate boxes and stuff. And by, you know, real tension, I don't mean that they're like fighting in the streets, but I mean that I don't think you can go to, if you follow artists on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I think after every con, you'll probably get some comments from them about like, Oh, you know, I was placed in this place over by here. And then I, you know, I didn't, everybody was walking by, like nobody bought anything or whatever. I think that there's like a feeling that, especially in artist alley and stuff, that there's not a lot of viability to the comic con circuit the way it is now for people to get their books out there. Um, and I don't know what the solution to that is. I know there's other, um, places like the small press expo in DC. Um, but I think that, in the next 10 years, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to see like maybe comic cons be comic related still. And then kind of there being like other geek expos, anime conventions, fan expos. I know that those already exist, you know, they're already building in size, but it wouldn't surprise me that much if there's some type of regulation on the part of the, um, like, see, the thing is I know Baltimore, like Baltimore comic con, for example, they don't want to kick people out. They don't want to say like, oh, you, this is a comic book convention exclusively because then you go down from 40,000 attendees to, you know, a much smaller number. Um, so I, I don't see it on the part of like the conventions kind of changing that up because I'm sure they, they love that, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if there's like some type of movement for comic book creators to have a separate kind of convention thing, uh, whether like it's more in, inside industry focused and has much more um, of a concentration around the craft and art and stuff of comic books like I've been talking, and then to maybe leave the comic cons as being some type of, like, general fan and geek gathering that's, you know, much more accepting and generalized and not as much about comics themselves. I mean, you know, even um, San Diego and New York, the biggest comic cons, those are the ones that are most... Um, infiltrated is a strong word, but the most influenced by uh, movies and uh, TV shows and all that stuff, you know, it, it's mostly a pop culture convention and less a, of a comic book convention. Um, so I don't know exactly where that's going. I'm, I'm not, you know, an expert on cons. I can't say for certain, but in my mind, I think that I know I would, I would kind of be into that, like, you know, going a little bit more concentrated with the convention scene for comic books and kind of making something that is um, more akin to a smaller um, independent artist exp expo rather than having the artist, you know, try to stack up against the same, you know, people that are selling all these other things. Um, I, I would like that. And I think it would be interesting for a lot of people. And I also think artists might make stand to make more money, both um, in terms of sketches, commissions, and things at those type of things, and in terms of being able to actually promote books and, and have, you know, connections that are made that are um, stronger than they might be at conventions, which are overwhelmingly, uh, you know, stuffed with other types of content besides comic books in them. I'm not sure. I would love to hear what you guys think about that one. Um, that one might be the least formulated of what I'm thinking about, but I just think it's an, it's, I think there is tension in the convention circuit right now. Um, and I think it'll be an interesting, you know, change to see where it goes in the future. And then my final point of question and what I'm wondering is what is going to happen when comic book movie adaptations die out as the big, big blockbusters. Um, 
I think it will happen. There is no doubt in my mind, you know, there's sort of like periods. If you look at, you know, periods of time in Hollywood history or whatever, there's, you know, like seventies cop and crime movies or whatever. And like 80, there's like, I'm, I'm not probably selling it the best right now, but I think if you look back at decades, you could see that there are like sort of, um, genres or types of movies that typify or define kind of what was big and blockbustery in that time. And we've been kind of in the age of the superhero um, blockbuster as like the dominant movie going money making machine for the last about 15 years almost. I mean, it's been since uh, the first Spider-Man, the first X-Men and, and all that stuff. Um, probably more like a decade that we've been in with like the Marvel Universe Iron Man onward. But <clears throat> I just I don't know how much longer people are interested or can tolerate it. Um, you know, Doctor Strange, I think, opened overseas to big numbers. So I, it's not, you know, showing signs of slowing down. You know, every time things open, they open um, bigger and bigger and bigger. But I am I'm just wondering about going back to the comic book industry itself in the sense that I think the rise of the superhero movie or the rise of the comic adaptation movie has certainly um, engorged the, whatever the word is, uh, the comic book industry with readers and consumers um, as people who have been brought to comic books through movies. And if not people who are reading them, then at least people who are going to Target and buying, you know, the, the shirts that have Marvel and DC characters on them who might never, who might not have, you know, before. Um, and it's sort of, to me, in a, in a strange way, it kind of mirrors what I was talking about with the, with the 90s, where um, people got into comic books in such a big way, like the, the reader base um, swelled immensely, um, and the value of everything went up immensely, too, as, you know, people were brought into comic books as comic books became cool and fashionable and hip, and uh, people started to see how, you know, comic books from the 60s had increased value these days, you know, or like the 50s and 40s and stuff, like we're selling for huge amounts of money. And it led to this, you know, huge big speculation market where everybody wants to have the next thing that is big and hot. You know, they see, they see comic book art and comic books selling for huge amounts of money. So then they think like, oh, you know, I got to get on the stuff now and I'm going to save it forever. It's the same as any speculation work, you know, Care Bears or not Care Bears, uh, Beanie Babies, whoever the fuck, you know, uh, everybody wants to buy the special Beanie Babies because they're going to be worth something eventually. But the collector's things that are sold as collector's pieces from the beginning, those are not the things that are worth money, you know. Um, it's the things that nobody buys and then people want later. That's what's worth money. You know, you can't manufacture rarity. I mean, you can if you don't print anything, but you can't manufacture um, like huge amounts of a product and then expect it to be valuable in the speculation market because there's so much of it. So my point is that I think in a weird way, we're kind of mirroring that time in the 90s where like the comic book readership has has expanded so, so uh, largely due to the movie popularity. And it's kind of a big boom in the industry right now with, you know, reprints and things like like i was saying you know people collecting 27 i think the on the archie relaunch there were like 27 variant covers or whatever and that's not to say that you know archie is exactly having movies and stuff although i think there's a tv show coming out soon but it's not like archie's blowing up the screen or anything but my point being that there are people who are into the industry with money who might never have been if it wasn't for movies and and uh television and superhero stuff being bigger you know the the comic book readership pool has expanded and there's more money being thrown around in there right now so what i wonder is if we're headed for another type of deflation <laughs> that we had in the late 90s where um you know everybody comes to realize that when superhero movies and and the pop culture you know phenomenon around superheroes dies out um and it's not such a big deal anymore to you know go to target and buy those shirts or to go to the movies and watch the next Avengers four or whatever. When that interest around it dies out and the speculators actually want to cash out their stuff at that point, you know, that's the question of like, where are we at then? Because then you start to realize that everything that people has been, have been accruing over the last decade as being rare and collectible and interesting 
um, is actually not worth what they think. And then everything, you know, lowers in market value and then everybody sells everything and the whole thing crashes and burns like it did before. And that's the question that I have. Oh, my cat is in the way. It's, um, is, is that kind of the expansion of geek culture and nerd culture um, through television and movies, bringing it up to this level that it's never seen before? Um, is it sustainable or is it going to move, you know, in 15, 10, 15 years when a new type of blockbuster is taking over? Is it going to move out of the way and then all of a sudden the people who are still left in the industry who are just comic book readers the whole time and have interest in that, are they going to be left with kind of the, uh, with like cleaning up the party basically, you know, after that, like when everything's popped and deflated, um, where did they stand after that? And I don't think this is necessarily going to happen. I think it ties in with my first point though, is that the relaunches and the new number ones and the variant covers and everything, like it definitely builds a cycle of, of hype and interest and speculation for those things eventually being worth money. Um, and you know, once the industry, like I said, starts shrinking back down and speculation, you know, cause now it's just speculators selling to speculators, selling to speculators and things increase in value and nobody actually cashes out. But when the industry um, gets smaller again and you want to cash out on stuff and you realize that everybody has that same thing and they want to cash out, it's not worth that much. Um, and I, that's what I'm wondering is, do you guys think that the, that the rise of geek culture has created this kind of like hype cycle and, you know, what's the, what's the word evil? It's not the you know, evil vortex sort of thing, um, where it's whipping everything up to a certain, um, you know, value and readership. And like, this is how many units we can expect to sell with a new relaunch. And this is how many things and blah, 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 blah. And then once the geek culture kind of moves out of the general pop culture spotlight, are we in for another industry, you know, slide down or slump or crash or whatever? You know, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure that, com I don't know how many more years comic books movies have in them, how many more years geek culture has of reigning supreme. Um, I'm not sure. But uh, I just question the ability of the, you know, for people who have loved comic books before that and who love comic books as just a pure art form now, I wonder if the ability of the industry to weather that massive ch influx and letting go of fans and readers through, you know, movies, TV, and pop culture, is is that, you know, the shuffle of people are in that in and out of the industry going to negatively affect the production of comic books and the perceived value of them in the future? I'm not sure. I don't exactly know. It's just another thought that I've had. So those are my three kind of things that I've been thinking about in response to Kurt's question. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think about the comic book industry going forward. Do you think that any of the things that I presented are, are total bunkus or do you think that they maybe have some value in them? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I haven't been intimately plugged into the culture for that long, but I just think that those are things when I think of, you know, direction of the industry and, and, points of tension and stuff. Those are things that come to my mind. So I'm curious if you have other ones as well, if there's other things that you see as being really impactful in the future of comic books or, or if the stuff that I said is also things that um, are not, maybe not worrisome, but at least interesting to you to see where it takes the industry. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said before, if you would like to suggest topics or um, reviews or anything like that for the channel or the podcast, um, you can check out the Patreon at nerdventures.com forward slash Patreon, um, where you can become a patron donor and have access to suggesting all that stuff. So keep the content flowing and uh, I will keep making awesome videos for you guys. At least I hope they're awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. As always, thank you guys so very much for tuning in and being part of the Nerd Ventures channel and community. If you would like to, feel free to click the subscribe link underneath this little pop-up video um, where you can get notifications of all the different things like when we go live for our uh, live stream recordings and book clubs and everything as well as all the latest videos from me. Um, if you're interested also, you can check out the Patreon link, which I hope is over in that corner and I'm pointing the correct way, uh, where you can see all of the different reward tiers and cool little... Uh, goodies that you can get for supporting the channel on Patreon. And I would also like to give an infinite thanks to all of those fine gentlemen and ladies who are in the Nerd Ventures Hall of Fame credits. Uh, thank you so very much. 
we could not make the channel and the podcast happen without you. Well, we could, but it wouldn't be that great. <laughs> well, it would still be great, but it wouldn't be that fun. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the community is what makes it all fun, and I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you have a great one.